Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of the Understanding FreeCAD series. We're on lesson five and we're going to be looking at something called an inverse pocket or a reverse pocket. Now this model that's in front of you, it looks quite complex, but it's actually very simple. You might get confused of how to do these curved surfaces, but these are very simplistic in the technique that we're going to be using. It's very similar to clay modeling where you take a piece of clay and cut away at the profiles until you get the model that you want. We'll be looking at this model and seeing how simplistic it is underneath. And then we'll be creating something using that technique. So I hope you're enjoying these lessons and let's have a look at this process. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Let's start by looking at this model. You can see we've got these two curved sides here. And if we look across the top as well, it's curved along here. If I go back just a couple of pockets to here, you can see how simplistic this is. So we started off with a simple box. And then we've created these features inside, which are all pockets and pads, simple pockets and pads in there. And if we go through, we can see how this is built up. Going back to the start, the simple block, a pocket, followed by a pad, followed by a second pocket, then another pocket for the holes, and then we start getting into the profiles. Here's the first profile. And all we've done is actually pocketed a profile out of this. The same with this one. If we go back to the first profile and have a look at it, we can see inside the pocket there's a sketch. And though this isn't fully constrained, it's just an example of what we can do. If we look at the sketch, we can see something different about it. It sits upon this face, and we can see we've got a B spine that goes through here. Let's just hide the body to have a look at what we got. So we have this B spine shape here, and then we have a border. And this creates a kind of cookie cutter to pocket the necessary material away from the object. So just like in clay modeling, we would actually create the block and then cut away at the profiles to get the correct shape. And you can see how the shape it's the same to this sketch. So there's a the sketch part that we want to keep, and this outside part is the one we want to remove. If this border didn't exist, then we'll be left with the outside, with the inside removed. This is the reason why it's called an inverse pocket. So we're doing the inverse of our shape by adding a border around here. Let's have a look at the other profile, this pocket here, and bring back the sketch. We can see this profile sitting here, the same again, a cookie cutter shape, the profile within. So here's our two profiles that we've pocketed through. And that's basically the technique. So to demonstrate this technique, I've come into the part design. I'm going to create a new body and a new sketch in there along the XY plane. This one here. Okay, that. And I'm going to make a simple shape in here. Just a rectangle, not worried about constraints. I'm just going to pad this up at around 50 millimeters. This gives me a shape to work with and demonstrate the technique. I'm going to pick one of these faces, 
So for instance, I'm gonna pick this face. I'm gonna create a sketch on it here. Now I need to sketch my shape. So before I use the B spline, we can use whatever shape we want. And the shape doesn't have to lie fully on the object. So for instance, I could use a circle and only leave this much material. Would be a bit wasteful. Let's delete that. Let's go for a B spine. And we can make whatever shape we want. But we must make sure that we have a closed shape. I will go for constraining this, but I'm going to leave that up to you. This is just for speed. An auto constraint to that point there. And auto constraint to that one. So we have our shape. Now, if I close and try to pocket this using the pocket tool, you can see what's happening. We're actually pocketing that shape into there. We don't want to do that because if I went through all, then we created this extraction here. We want the inverse of here. So I just hit OK and set that, come into the pocket, double click the sketch and use a rectangle in here. Then what's happening is that this shape inside is seen as a void or a hole within here. So when we close now, we get the outer border pocketed all the way through this. Come back into the sketch and see what we have. So we have our B spline that's connected up down the bottom here. This must be a geometry that's closed. And we have our border that goes around the outside. So we're looking to leave this shape in here. When I hit close, the outer shape is removed and the inner shape is left. And we can do this on multiple sides. For instance, I can come to this side and click on the bottom, create a new sketch and do the same. This time, maybe I want a circle within here. And we use a rectangle around the outside. It must be beyond the shape because anything within this rectangle will be removed, but the inside of here will be kept. Let's hit close and do a pocket. You can see what's happening now. So part of that has been pocketed away with this shape left. And it's up to you whether you want to go through all or just have part of this removed. And hit OK. And it's as simple as that. Just remember to fully constrain your sketches within. With something like a B-spline, like this, it's well worth using the block constraint. And that will lock that down all in one go. And you can do the same with these sides as well. So that is fully constrained now just by using the block constraint, which blocks those edges from moving. So I hope you found that useful and I hope to see you in the next lesson. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.